Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog. Today I'm finishing up a pair of best worsted socks worked from the bottom up and I'd like to show you how to do the invisible ribbed bind off, which is sometimes also known as the knit one purl one bind off. The invisible ribbed bind off is a neat way to finish knit one purl one ribbing and it creates a very flexible edge. This finishing method is actually more closely related to grafting than what most knitters think of as binding off because the stitches are finished off with a yarn needle instead of your knitting needles. Also, this method creates a tubular edge where the ribbed stitch pattern appears to roll seamlessly from the right side over the edge to the wrong side instead of that more linear edge you get when stitches are bound off by somehow passing one stitch over the next. To do the bind off, you'll need a yarn needle, and if you're working in the round, a locking stitch marker. Let's get started. To get started, cut your yarn tail about four times longer than the length that you're going to be binding off, and thread that tail onto a yarn needle. I am going to be demonstrating the bind off in the round, but it can also be worked flat across a row of stitches. So if you were binding off a row of stitches, you'd need to do a quick setup and bring the yarn tail purlwise through the first stitch and then knitwise through the second stitch, leaving both of these two stitches on your knitting needle as you do that. Since I'm working in the round to set up, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Instead of doing those two setup stitches, I'm actually going to clip a locking stitch marker through those first two stitches. So I'm going through the first two stitches, lock it in place, and I'm gonna just leave that marker hanging here down at the front of my work until the end of the round, and then I'll show you what to do with it. So to bind off, we're going to be working through pairs of stitches. So first we'll pull the tail through the two knit stitches, and then we'll work through two purl stitches, and then two knit stitches, and then two purl stitches, and so on until we finish the bind off. When the first stitch on your needle is a knit, like mine is, you're going to insert your yarn needle knitwise through that knit stitch and drop it off the needle and then purl wise through the second knit stitch and pull the yarn all the way through. And just make sure here that you aren't getting tangled up on your knitting needles or on that stitch marker that's hanging there. When your first stitch is a purl stitch, like mine is, you're going to bring your yarn needle purlwise through that first stitch and drop it off. Then you have to bring your needle forward between the knit and the purl, and then knitwise through that next purl. And pull the yarn through. And again, you just have to be careful you're not getting your yarn tangled up in anything when you're pulling through. So my next stitch is a knit. So I'm going to work through the pair of knits. So knitwise through the first stitch, drop it off, purlwise through the next stitch, and pull the yarn through. My next stitch is a purl. So I'm going to go purl wise through the purl stitch, drop it off, bring my yarn needle forward between the knit and the purl, and then knit wise through that second purl and pull the yarn through. And then you would just continue in this manner 
until you have worked all the way around or across all of your stitches and you only have two live stitches left on your knitting needle. When you get to the end, you'll have two live stitches left on your knitting needles. If you're working in rows, you would finish off by bringing the yarn knitwise through the knit and drop it off your needle and pull the yarn through. Then purl wise through the purl, dropping the stitch off and pulling the yarn through. And then you would be finished and you just need to weave in the yarn tail. But you'll remember I'm working the round. So I have this stitch marker here at the beginning of the round and this is where it comes in handy. So I'm going to bring my needle knitwise through the knit, just like I have been. And then purl wise through that next knit. And pull the yarn through. I just have one purl left on my needle, so I'll bring it my yarn purl wise through the purl drop it off my knitting needle. The needle comes between my knit and my purl, and then I need to go knit wise through that last purl. This time it probably will be a little bit easier to pull your yarn through first and then go knit wise through that last stitch and pull the yarn through. And you're all done binding off. And you can go ahead and remove the stitch marker from your work. And then all that's left is weaving in the tail on the wrong side. What you may not have realized as you were watching this lesson is that this bind off is technically the same as doing the Kitchener stitch. But instead of having every other stitch divided out onto two needles, we kept them on one. How cool is that? I hope you enjoyed learning how to do the invisible ribbed bind off. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechilidog.com and look for my best worsted socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!